Hello everyone, my name is Rajesh Kumar and I'm your DevOps SRE DevSecOps coach. I have a uh, close to 18 plus years of experience working uh, in uh, multiple MNSCs around the globe and uh, having in-depth knowledge of DevOps, SRE and DevSecOps. Uh, so I would like to introduce you uh, one certification program in a DevOps and that is we, we call it DevOps Certified Professional. Uh, now this is a two months of program, 25 tools uh, of DevOps you will learn. And uh, apart from that, you will also get the access to the LMS, lifetime access to the videos portal. It's a certification program and uh, you will have 25 assignments and two projects along with it. It's a completely weekend program. So here you have a classes on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so as part of this course, you will learn multiple things. Here you see that uh, you will learn Linux, AWS, Docker, Jira, Confluence, Python, Git with GitHub, SonarCube, Maven, Gradle, Packer, Artifactory, Selenium, Jmeter, Ansible, Kubernetes, Helm, Terraform, Jenkins, Datadog, Splunk, and Neuralink. Uh, now, how do we, uh, you know, apply for this? So, how can you reach out to us? So, you have a WhatsApp number and email ID. So, please uh, reach out to us, and we'll help you to onboard this program. Uh, apart from this uh, DevOps certified professional programs, we are offering other certifications as well in a DevSecOps, SRE, and uh, one of the very very comprehensive programs which we have is in ma is in Master in DevOps Engineering. Yeah, so feel free to get in touch with us and then uh, end all for it. Thank you. So today I will talk about uh, PVs, PVCs, and uh, storage class. PVC. Oh, Persistent volume class, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, second one, I'm going to talk about RBAC. So these are the topics, two topics we'll have it today. Now, first thing, uh, question is very simple. Uh, how can we have data persistent? That's, uh, you know, uh, the problem which you have persistent beyond mm -hmm. the life cycle of the pod so beyond the life cycle of the pod means pod is gone data should not be gone so how do we do that so basically uh, we have so many uh, you you can say like a pv options are available pv means persistent volume so this multiple pv options are available some of these pv options i want to show you on the screen so if you go for kuber net storage storage here and this is the official website pages for it and now if you see that here you go to the persistent volume which is here so many uh, technologies are available and uh, some of the technologies i want to show you that is here look at this so you can create a pvs uh, using many methods which is available okay uh, in short you can create a pvs using uh, 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 what you say uh, block storage okay. uh, oh, you can it? also use file storage file storage means uh, block storage means in aws, AWS. we have ebs yeah. ebs yeah disks and all in azure uh, file storage means EFS uh, or you know file servers and all so these are the options are available for it so if you see that here this is Azure is being used this is AWS this is a sender which is from OpenShift and this is the Google Google oh, okay. like that so different is different OpenShift things cloud provided? I don't have any ex experience with OpenShift what, should, what is OpenShift Open shift. This is the sender. Oh, oh, oh open shift. Oh, open stick. You can use sender in open, open stick. stick. Oh, okay. Yeah. What is sender? Yeah. yeah, this is the one. Yeah, is that another cloud? Oh, it's deprecated. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, deprecated, but it will work on the open stick. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is not the only complete options. Uh, uh, there are few more options. Look at this here. So many got deprecated here. So here, this is the complete list types of persistent volume. So a lot of options are available. So more or less cloud like AWS, Azure and Google Cloud. Uh, this option which you see here is for the vSphere. Okay. 
now uh, EBS you here you have it okay so like uh, uh, a quick question how would you yeah how would you you do you do sharing but you have a different instructions I'm um, sharing like a like a, a ACL access controllers like they can have like different classes of data huh so we cannot have like that uh, uh, let's say if you create a Kubernetes cluster on AWS uh, using EKS so you have to use this one only you cannot use some others okay okay if you are using Azure then you have to use this one like that okay what about in hybrid so, environments so hybrid environment there are some services uh, like a pipeline sort of it flow and all so you'll have to work on it uh, we have to use that one so multiple uh, interfaces can be possible but some sort of connection needed between the hybrid environment okay. and uh, one more thing uh, here uh, you can have a multiple Kubernetes clusters also that way so you can manage the hybrid environment okay so now the question was how can we have a data persistence so here if you see that on this page you should refer it these options are available now i am not going to use any of these options uh, the reason is i have set up a cluster in a uh, in a manual way uh, not through eks or eks or gke okay no. i have not set it up. yeah so I have set it up uh, the cluster manually the first day which I showed you so mm -hmm. I'm going to use this one this one okay so this one so what exactly this is so this is the block storage host path and uh, using this you will have a PV created in the machines where the pod is running okay so this is for learning purpose uh, host volume path of a single node testing only will not work for the multi multi node clusters so consider okay. using local volume instead so local volume which is here which works in the multi device on the mountain node so this is a something which you can use it okay so what is the flow workflow very simple way first thing uh, you create a pod in the pod you use the pvc okay PVC. PVC means what? PVC means uh, persistent uh, volume yeah. claim. A volume yeah. claim. Okay. So you, you you pod request for the PVC, and PVC create a volume using PV. Okay. Is PV is that persistent volume? In a separate YAML file, or is that all done within one YAML file? You can put it in all in YAML one in one also separate also no problem. Okay. okay. So now this part. Uh, the one which you see pod and pvc is is done by user of cluster and this part has to be done by admin of the cluster those who are managing the cluster they will make a pvc okay so pv pv will be make uh, by admin it's a pool of pvs and pvc and pod will be created by user something like that so now the question is how do we create a pv first and uh, what I said, like I'm going to use the PV using host path, but you can use uh, others also like NFS, local and all stuff like that, you can use it. If you're on cloud, you can use this one also. So how do we create a PVs first? So let me show you some examples for it. So go to this place, blog, PV Kubernetes PV and here many examples are there so here if you see that here you have PV PVC using EBS here you have a PVC using host path so this will uh, this will this can I use can use it but I need something this one uh, let me show you so just a second session volume something else i need and here this is for the nfs network file system and this is for host path so this is a simple example you'll understand better way okay so here 
how do we create a pvs see here you are creating pvs epa version name of the pvs host path and storage class manual and here how much gv and this is the driver host path and the location in the node worker here it is so this is a one pv i am creating two or let's say created two or three pvs so what to do look at my screen so here go and uh, get a pv vipv.yaml and paste it it's a 1gb name is host a sideline side side question yeah how would you do so like as a dry run what is the command to do it as a dry run uh there's no so uh, uh there's no as such dry run here because it will do some changes oh, okay and yeah so this is not something which you can dry run here some test and all you want to do that so qctl get config all this thing you can do get nodes and all you can do that okay so here pv so qctl apply hyphen f pv dot yaml uh this spelling mistake qctl apply hyphen f pv dot yaml so enter i created pv the spelling mistake actually so this is only one pv i created qctl get pv pv is at the cluster level so right now you see the one pv is created named with host path available now i'll create one more pvs and this time i'll change the little bit of requirement so here i want one pvs and here i'll create a 2gv okay 2gv same locations that's okay and then here two pvs i created so like that administrator will create a multiple pvs okay got it yeah i understood yeah so now pvs is created now how that's do we create a pv right is that huh? for multiple pods? So when you create multiple P um, PVs, is that are you referring to in the use case of multiple pods? Ah uh, yes, uh, PVs means if you if you know AWS, you go and yeah. create a volumes, right? So yeah, that's correct. Ha! Huh. So that volume you create uh, because of AWS has team AWS team has available those storage, correct? Now, so you create a volume. So aws team is making available the storage for you that process is called pv process in kubernetes it's this oh. should be done by administrator oh yeah. understand Admin. by the cloud administrator you mean yeah and then you will go and create a pvs that process is called pvc and you attached in the pod and amount inside a container Okay, so that is the so T two PVC I have created. Now you have to create a PVs PVC. Uh, sorry, I have created two PVs. I have to create a PVC persistent volume claim. So here you are saying persistent volume claim. F here, right now it's one GB, but I'll say three GB. Okay, so let me create a three GB of PVCs. This is the claim done by user. So here. So VI PVC dot YAML set it up done give CTL apply hyphen YAML and give CTL get PVC. So here you see uh, by mistake I did not change this. So it got bounded. So if you see that, I created a one GV, so it got bounded because one GV here. Now what I will do? I'll create a three GV. Just again. So hold on. I'm demanding three GV of PVCs. Here, three GV, and you see this will go into the pending. I have to change the name also, right? here 
and now you see pvs2 you have one is available one is bounded and pvc1 is pending right now see why because you are demanding 3 gv but we don't have any pools available of pvs where the 3 gv is available understood now understood yeah so pvs is a pool pvc is a claim of the pool and now because you have got this one which is bounded that means it's this one so this pvc you can use in the pod so where kind is equal to pod and here pod dot spec dot volume here you are using this name of the claim and this 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 particular claim you are mounting inside a container here see the spec containers yeah okay. so now anything you stored inside a container Post in this location in the chat for me please yeah yeah so i'll send it to you all right okay so right. this is the something which we have make sense yeah makes sense understood so now i'm going to create a pvc uh, pod uh, this you can have it in the deployment also or replication controller whatever it is so this is the one vi sc.yaml sorry pod.yaml sorry vi pod dot yaml save it done qctl apply hyphen f pod dot yaml enter qctl get pods see here in this pod and now anything inside this container if you stored here so let me create some files here so qctl exec this container this pod and touch and in this locations some file which i'm creating index.html now created now this file which you are creating in here you should see at this location in this place can you see that yeah, ls understand. here so now this data will be persistent so let me delete this part now so qctl delete pod this part i delete it and data you see still available and if you create a new pod the data you will get it with the new pod see here and then uh exec this pod ls and if you see that data is got to the new pod replacement pod here it is so this way the data will be persistent beyond the life cycle of the pod using pv pvc concept are you able to understand this yeah i understand yeah so this one i created manually this is called a static uh, provisioning but if you want the dynamic provisioning so here you have to use storage class so what will happen uh, if you look at the code here first let me explain it to you so first pod will demand pvc pvc will demand pvs and pv will not be there i created manually the pvs so it will ask a storage class storage class will create a dynamic provisioning means pv will be created dynamically and attached to the pvc and pod so how it works so let me show you here so in this code if you see that storage class was there here while creating a pvs claim here storage class were manual okay so but you can automate it binding you can do that how let me show you so here you can create a storage class like this okay this is the storage class example multiple examples are there so you can create a storage class let me show you one example here so 
SQL example. So here, if you see that, uh, this is the this is the storage class example, or you can check this one also. Uh, this one. Okay. So now here, what you are doing? See here, you are creating a storage class named with fast. Okay. Now here you are creating a claim and here you see storage class you will use the, this name storage class name is equal to fast this one example mm. second examples you can use this one this one local so here you created storage class named with local storage now here stateful set they are using a look at this volume here and the specifications is local storage so this way what will happen the pvs which i was creating manually hello are you able to hear me yeah yeah i'm listening can you hear me hello can you hear me now yeah yeah i can hear you yeah so earlier the uh, the pvs which i was creating manually uh, this uh, storage class will create a pvs and the sub to uh, pods and all stuff like that okay okay understood yeah so these are the three resources which we have it available for the storage which will, you can practice it now our back what is our back so access control yeah so first thing in kubernetes which we have one topic which is called authentications so how how can you authenticate uh, so typically in kubernetes uh, we use certificates certificate for authentications and there is another other, other things which we have is authorizations authorization mm -hmm. means authentication means how can you log in so certificate and authorizations means this spelling mistake just ignore it authorizations uh, so how how to uh, authentication means how to log in that using certificate authorization means how can you set the user's access what you are what the user is allowed to do that so that is called rbac role based access control so this is the two things so for this you can access this tutorial Kubernet are back and this one understanding authentication and authorization in Kubernet. Okay, so Understand. here, yeah, so authentication certificate and authorizations. I have a quick question. And, yeah. What is the what tool do you actually use for certification? Open SSL or is there a special tool be, open, being used? Open SSL. Open SSL. Okay. Certificate. I'll show you this. Okay. So here and authorizations are back, which which we use it. Okay. So first let's get a certificate uh, from the server. So what need to be done? This is the process which I have put it up. Okay. So user means you create a private key that's the first step user will generate a csr file second step after the csr file will be sent to ca third step and fourth step you will get a certificate back uh, that is a fourth step okay so how do we do that so all this command i have mentioned here so look at this here so this one uh, i am creating it in front of you so here First thing I need to create private key. So this command will create a private private key open SSL. See here, this is a private key. Now I'll create using private key, I'll create a CSR file. So this command will create a CSR file. Here I'm use this employee.key output CSR and all. This is the username and this is the group name of it. Okay, so this is the CSR file. So now you see the CSR file. Now this CSR file you will send it to the administrator of Kubernetes cluster. 
unfortunately i'm fortunately i'm the same cluster i'm in the same cluster so you can send it this one and now admin will run this command okay so here admin will say hey uh, requesting uh, using the csr and using this uh, authority file output create a certificate file and this is something for 500 days so this will create a crt files because i'm in the same server done so now i got the crt files here now crt files after generating a crt file uh, user admin will send the crt file to user and user will use the crt file and private key okay to set up a config file cube config file here this command is to create a cube config file so let's do this at the screen yeah okay so you're going to add the certification to the cube config file correct so cube is config the... file. Yeah. okay so this this command will show you uh see here so i got the two users this is the one i just now added and this was earlier added actually so i got the two uh, imp users and that's all so now i have to create a new context Name to the employee context. So let me create a context here and done it. Now you can check these two contexts are there. And here it is. So context one, context two. So this is the employee context. This have no access right now. This you have a full access. So that is done. Now can we create a uh, office namespace? Uh, this i'm doing through the admin created now using this context can i get the ports in the so i'm using the employee context which have a uh, authentication is done authorization is not there so see here here says a hey, user employee cannot list resources ports in api group that means cannot list that means this guy has no permissions and all users yeah. the okay. access is provided so this way you enable you get a certificates authenticate authorize authentication is done authorization is not done for this guy that means user can log in it but he cannot do anything so this is the way uh, you can get your authentication done another, okay. an, another now, question yeah yeah so this that goes to show that um, the the context or the config context it is it can be utilized for role for role based for, for the role changes within aws like that you have different a different ami so you can actually use a different you can switch a context to access different to access oh, yes, different yes, yes. Oh, uh, okay. so here what i did here what i did multiple context you can set it up so if you see that okay. here i set it up no one user employee and here i created my context here so here uh, you can have a one more cluster for aws aks eks whatever multiple cluster multiple user multiple context you can set it up in cube config okay understood yeah so now that's called authorized authentications now authorizations we have rbac rbac means role based access control so what happens understand this way rbac means what is rbac so we have to create a role okay how do we create a role let me show you so here first identify what resources you want api resources and group you want access so for example we have uh, so many resources right pod uh, deployment services pv pvc and all, all these resources so you have resources now what access so list get create watch delete patch all these are access so what we do uh, we create a role okay and we create a role and in that what we say hey these are the these are the api resources and these are the group of resources and you will have a this access what access uh, this crud option list get all this thing whatever you can see that so this okay. will be having crud access so we create a role actually okay so we create a role so for example one example of role is i'll show you this uh, look at this this code see this is a role okay so what we are saying hey what you want role name of the role is role is uh, uh, for the namespace specific so here office which i created earlier 
and the name of the role is deployment manager so in this role these are the api group these are the resources and these are the access you'll be given basically everything get list watch and all if you want in one go you can use star also okay so you create a role so now after creating a role what we do this is a user which is or it can be group also or service account also okay so user is basically for the human and service account is for the uh, some of the uh, utility account you can say is used for the internal to kubernetes clusters and all so if you want to add this user or group or service account this process we call it uh, role binding okay so if you see that here this role binding is there okay and in this role binding you have you are saying hey uh, right now in my case user you employ attached to the role which is called deployment manager which i created here that's all so now after that if you check this here so you, you create a role and you create a role binding and after that when you check the access you'll have it so can we do that so let me create this if you had to put what role binding into simple terms for what, what would it be role is basically is a play is a collections of resources is a collections of resources plus what access you want to give it that is the role role binding means adding a user or group or service account to the role so these users will have access to this resources this resources this access okay i understand yeah so i'm creating a role this code will not work v to one so v1 has come this is the last year code so let me change this role dot yaml and insert now make it v1 cpa version because it has come and then save it now give ctl get roles see uh, and uh, get roles for office namespace office namespace see no, nothing is there so this roles will be created in the office namespace so give ctl apply hyphen f and uh, role and you see here this role is created now there is one user which is called employee i'm going to bind it so here and here so let's create rb.yaml rb.yaml and enter now this is also v1 so you have to change that So here I'm doing and RP dot YAML done. Can you check now access? So now you can check that earlier we had a sub permission denied issues. Now you got created. And now using the employee context, see you're using, you're getting it so here uh, the thing is authentication you should do through certificate for the user and authorization you can do through rbac in rbac you create a roles and role bindings to allocate anyone access uh, any users or group or service account access to some of the resources and level of access so this is a role and role binding let me tell you here role and role binding you can use for granting access to uh, namespace level only okay you cannot use this one for uh, granting a cluster wide access so that's the reason you might have noticed here always namespace office namespace office and all so let's say if you want to assign someone access to uh, to entire cluster instead of namespace then what you should do so in that case you'll use cluster role and cluster role binding okay only the same concept but the this will kind will change cluster role and cluster role binding everything will remain same but the kind will become change actually 
so if you want to assign in a simple way if i say if you want to assign someone access to entire cluster use a cluster rule and cluster bind cluster rule binding if you want to assign someone access to at a namespace level then use the role only understood understood yeah so this also you try it will help you to get understanding on this okay any any questions so far if you would have any issues with our channel membership you can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries we will reply to them at the earliest thanks for watching